In this video, I'm going to show you the four color method to make this plaid blanket. We'll use a special yarn to give it this unique look. Let's get started. I want to talk about picking the color for your blanket. So you're going to need four colors. And how I did this was my main, the multicolor that I'm using is this one. I knew that I wanted something with these soft shades of green. This is for a particular person, the particular color in their home, which is the soft green in both the bedroom and living room. So I wanted that to kind of be my jumping off point. So from here, complementing colors, I'm going with a, a creamy, more like a buttery yellow color, and then a soft bluish green. This is actually the color in the home, the main color that complements it. And then to jazz it up, I have a sparkle. So that's how I picked my colors. Just to, you know, give you an idea. They're uh, this one is Blossom Cakes, and the shade is Tide Pool. And this is a cotton acrylic blend. It's almost like a tubey yarn. It's very soft and bouncy. And then I love the Hobby Lobby yarn for blankets. This is Spa. There's my other color. I think this one is, um, yeah, it's cream. Spa. I use this for my gingerbread coastal collection. Gorgeous color. And then the metallic is ivory with gold thread. So I want to talk a little bit about picking your yarn. So I'm going to put a slide up of some, just some inspirational colorways that you might want to consider. And I've got I think everything I put up there are Karen brand yarns, but you use whatever you like. I just, I know those yarns because I work with them quite a bit, but not all of them are created equal. So this is what you want to look for. When you see yarns like this that are all wound up, you don't really know what the transition looks like unless you really look closely. So let me pull this out and I wanna show you what to look for. So you want some kind of smooth gradient and you want a frequent color change. This one's very frequent, but it's effective. All right, so you see we have a nice smooth little transition here. There we go, going into the white. A little smooth transition there, coming into the gold color. All right, so this one would be perfectly fine for this project. This Karen, Cakes is, this is, I believe this is just the original. Karen Cakes, fun colors with the cantaloupe and the beige colors and the taupe. However, it does not have smooth transitions and it does not have frequent transitions. So I have a square here. Look at all this yarn before the color transitions. This would not be good for this blanket because you're gonna work your rows and then they're gonna end up being mostly this cantaloupe color, then your next section will be mostly the taupe color, and that kind of defeats the purpose of having that showstopper main multicolor yarn. So that one would not work. Something like this scarfy yarn from Lion Brand, this transitions beautifully. All these shades, I've worked with this before, look at these nice gradients. This would be perfect for the project. Although this is a category five and I used category four. So you wanna make sure that all of your yarns are in the same category. Now, something else you could use is the, um, like the fuzzier yarns, the Colorama Halo yarn that I used for the rosemary scarf or shawl wrap slash scarf. That could give, a, it's a beautiful gradient, but it also has that light softness to it, that sort of fuzzy look. So one section could have that. I think that could look really interesting. The latte cakes, maybe not so much, but Karen Cloud Cakes is also has that soft look to it. And it's gorgeous gradient. And I do have that up in the image in the color cinnamon. 
So that's just some tips on how to pick the right, uh, the gradient or marble color yarn that will be the foundation of your colorway. Okay, so once you've picked your four colors, then you're going to figure out how you want the colors to flow in your blanket. So I'm going to start with my kind of the base color that's the color of the room I'm trying to match. I want to start with a solid, okay? And I'm going to put in the gold fleck off-white yarn, then my gradient color, and then the cream. From there, this will start again, here to here, here, here. So that's how my colors are going to flow. And you already see that in the finished pictures, but just so that you're plotting out how you want it to flow before you get started. Then choosing your hook size. So if you're gonna be using different yarns like I'm using here, go with the largest of the recommended. So for I love this yarn, a 5.5 is the recommended hook size. For this one, the Blossom Cakes, five millimeter. So 5.5 is the largest, that's the size I'm going to use. And if you really want a drapey blanket, you can go up half a hook size. So I could even go up to a six for this, but it is going to have that chain one space. This is a very basic plaid crochet blanket technique. And that's going to be double crochet, chain one space, double crochet. So that's already going to give it some kind of floppiness. Once you've decided your blanket size that you'd like to make, and I'll have a size chart up here and also in the post linked below, you will pick your starting chain based on which side you want your fringe on. So if you want it on the shorter side, chain the shortest of the two measurements for your finished blanket. And then if you want it on the longer side, like I've done, I wanted a lot of fringe, do the longer side, and then you'll work up enough rows to equal out your final measurement. To get started, you're going to um, start and end with the same color. And I'm gonna start with the color called Spa. And I'm using, as I mentioned, I'm using the largest hook of the hooks recommended for the yarns that I've chosen. So I had the five millimeter and then 5.5 for one of the yarns. So I'm using the 5.5. And I'm going to chain an even amount. So I'll do a sample chain here. All right, so I've chained 12. This is a really uh, basic way to do this. This isn't anything you know, groundbreaking. You may have seen plaid before. So I'm following that. The, the four color method that I'm using is what makes this blanket look special. So in the second chain from hook, I'm going to work some single crochet across the row and that will give me my odd number of stitches. And this will set up the mesh. You want to chain it out for your length of your blanket, or if you want it to work, oops, I or if you want it to be your width that you're chaining, and then the length will be where your plaid top stitching goes, you can do it that way. All right, so I've got 11 now, and then this is how you're going to work your start of each row to avoid um, that kind of gappy, you can chain three, that counts as a double crochet, skip a stitch. I don't like the way that looks. That's gonna give kind of a loose wiggly edge. So the pattern says to do a stack single crochet. This is how you do it. So turn your work so it's facing you. Don't chain, nothing. Just do it. Bring that hook, push it right through that stitch, the first stitch. Come up, pull through. Then look in the front. There's the top of the stitch, the V up here, but look in the front and then these two bars 
going to work into this one. Take my hook, scoop into that lower slanted loop in the front, pull up, and work another single crochet. So that's the stack single crochet. Chain one, skip one, then work double crochet. I think my cat's coming up here. He just woke up. Okay, chain one, skip one. And this is all you're going to be doing for the blanket. So you will do four rows of each color, chain one, skip one with a double crochet until you have the width that you like finishing with the same color you started with. Just chain one, skip one. And when you get to the end of the row, your last double crochet will work be worked into the last stitch. So it should have a nice straight edge, especially working the stacked single crochet as your turn. And I'll do that again with you now. So I'll be working four rows of this color like this with the chain one, skip one. And then I'll bring up my new color for my color chain. All right, turn, look at the top, don't chain. Just put that hook in there, tighten up, make the single crochet. Go into, as you're looking at it from the front, not the top, go into this, this little part of the stitch right there and work a single crochet into that. Chain one, skip one double crochet here. So your post will be lining up your double crochet. Chain one, skip one. There's that double crochet. There's the stitch on top that you work into. It's very simple. As simple as spectacular when you have a really beautiful color combination. one I'm at the last stitch skip one and then here's the the end so let's look at what that looks like with that stack single crochet here's my chain one skip one this looks a little bunchy but don't worry about that because you're going to fix it you're going to go into this stitch both loops right here yarn over chain one skip one and then there's that top stacked single crochet. See, nice straight edge. Turn, don't chain, just go right into the stitch. Then work into that little side stitch for the stacked single crochet. Chain one, skip one. See, now I'm on the third row of the mesh. Skip one, work into the top of that double crochet. All right, so I've got my blanket laid out in the opposite direction of the way I was working. Oh gosh, here we have a cat coming. I knew that would happen. I'm on the bed because it's a wide flat surface and I thought they were asleep. All right, so what I'm doing at this point is I'm starting in this direction. So the opposite way of the stripes. And I've got color number one threaded and I help her here. Hello, that's Finn. <laughs> He'll stay there while I show you how to thread this. Okay, so I'm going to go in 
I have three strands and I've got two feet of length on either end. So measure out your blanket with your yarn and then allow an extra couple of feet, depending on the size you're making, but kind of a mid size, I would allow two feet at each end of your thread. So I'm gonna come in to the stitch and then the bars here, each row in the mesh space, we're going to alternate over, under, over, under, and just do that all the way up. So I just was under, so I'm gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under. through. And I'm pulling just till I have my two feet hanging at this opposite end. So I'm going to finish this row, come back, and then the next row is going to alternate from this one using the same color again. Right, I'm at the end, so I'm just going to make sure that I get my last stitch with uh, two loops on hook in that very first starting row. Go all the way through. I have plenty of room for my fringe at either end. In fact, two feet on either end may have been see yeah a little too much but you know I'd rather have too much than run short okay, so you can see our color change starting to or our contrast plaid start to develop all right so I'm going to use color one again to repeat this but I will be doing opposite over and under so I'll start let me get my yarn and we'll start together I'll be right back so I've got my threading and I'm ready to start the next row. So the first one I came in here from under. This time I'm going to come in from the front over. Then let me find, well not quite that close, the stitch because we're working into the box spaces. So since I was over here, I'm going to start under on this side come up so the bar where I'm below is the one where I was above on the prior row where I did this threading of the yarn get my first pull through there under that side is over under here just keep feeding the yarn through a little more even. I made the set slightly shorter. So I'll keep feeding this and then for the next row of threading we're going to switch to color number two. So we're going to do a lot of color changes working in this direction. We're not going to do fours. We're going to do sets of two for a more dramatic look.
All right, so you see here I'm at the end of the second. So I'm going under and then go down. I'm sorry, not down, back up. There we go. So when we started this row, or when I started, but you're doing this too, I came in like this, right? So I'm coming back out and it looks like that. Whereas this row, I came in from under and I'm going out under just so that they stay consistent. All right, so now I'm going to get color two, which is the, I think it's the gold fleck. Let me see, how did I work this? Oh, here, I started from this end. So I'm going to use the creamy color. This color called cream is more, I think I would have called it banana because this is a cream also, and this is more what I think of as a cream, but the name doesn't matter, it's just that you want the tones that are gonna go with your kind of showstopper yarn, which for me is this marbly shade with the blues, the greens, and the lime color which, well, that's a green too, but um, that's it. Denim, teal, kind of a stone wash, and then the lime, and there's little kind of flecks of yellow as you go. I really like it. Right, once you've finished threading all of your colors through, you wanna shake out your blanket and give it a good look. Make sure there's no puckering, no pulling, that there's very even tension everywhere. And then you can start knotting up your fringe. So take your six strands, that's so two rows. Oh, I think the lawnmower's out there, the gardener. Um, your two strands, so by color section, and knot them together. And if you wanted to, you know, if you don't mind having beads on your blanket, I think it would be really cute to put a nice bead at the top of this before you make your knot. And once you've knotted all of your colors, you can line everything up to trim it to the length that you like. But double check the opposite side before knotting it once you finish your first side again just to make sure that your tension is very even and there's no puckering in your blanket now i'm trimming down my fringe so that it's all even and i'm kind of using a hairdresser method where you have your guide length so i've got about a six inch length here and i'm just going to come along and trim the others So that they all match up and I don't need to lay it out all over the bed and have it shifting I can just do it here on the sofa and then the blanket is done